Hey guys, and welcome back to another Thursday update video. Before we get into today's video, I just want to say happy Turkey Day to everybody watching. Happy Thanksgiving if you guys are watching today. Hope you guys have a nice time with family, friends, or if you're by yourself. Well, think of me. I'm with you eating a turkey. Nothing much better than that. If you guys are going Black Friday shopping tomorrow, wish me luck. Let me know what you guys are trying to get. If you're trying to get something for Black Friday or Cyber Monday, let me know what you guys are going for in the comments of today's video. So today's video actually isn't that long of an update. Really nothing too big today. However, those changes we talked about last week with the birdhouse changes, those are actually coming into the game. And also the, you know, the, the bird's nest leaving the Vorkath and Zolra drop table. Those are also leaving the game as well. So let's get into today's update, starting off with the birdhouse and bird nest balancing. Simply put, Jagex thought that there were way too many ways to obtain bird's nests in the game, mainly from the Callisto, Vorkath, and Zolra drop table. And now that they introduced the birdhouses as well, there's like 10 times as many birdhouses coming to the game every hour, pretty much. They nerfed Quite a few things that we can see right here. First off, the bird's nest have been re removed from the Vorkath and Zolra drop table. The Callisto bird's nest drop has also been removed and replaced with 30 dragon bones. Pretty much the only boss that has not been affected by this crushed nest nerf is the giant mole. So if you guys still want to do giant mole for the nests and all that, then it's still possible to do it. There's no nerf to that. You still get the same amount as before. Next up is the nerf to birdhouses. So simply put, if you guys are a high hunter level and you are using, for example, a magic birdhouse or a redwood birdhouse, then you're not really going to see that many changes to the amount of nests that you get, maybe one or two less average per run that you do. However, if you are, for example, level, let's say, 59 hunter and you're using U birdhouses, then you're going to see a lot less than you were before. They say right here that one of the key issues was that the Redwood birdhouses produced as many as 12 bird's nests on average per run, requiring 89 hunter, while you birdhouses produced only two fewer nests on average at 59 hunter. And I can pretty much agree with that. So now rather than being determined solely by the tier of birdhouse being used, the number of nests received is also now influenced by your hunter level. So with 89 hunter and using Redwood birdhouses, you can now expect to receive 9.8 nests average per run, with only a small number above that at 99. At level 5 hunter using regular birdhouse, Houses, two birds nests will be received per run on average. Don't let this deter you from not doing birdhouse runs. It is still an insanely amazing way to train hunter and gain birds nests for whatever type of account you have, Iron Man, or you're making money on a main account. Still continue to do them, but you will see a bit of a decrease. Now, the one thing that is a bit annoying about this is that I personally never thought that the high level bird houses were that overpowered. I have been 90 and a hunter for almost eight months now on my hardcore, and I've been doing birdhouse runs for seven, eight months as well. And I never really thought that they were that overpowered. I don't usually get 10 per run. I usually get like six or seven. So it is a bit weird. Again, I can understand the low level nerfs to bird houses, but for the high level hunter players, I mean, 99 hunter using magic and redwoods, I don't think that should be changed at all, but that's just me. That can be the topic for today's video. If you guys want to discuss the bird house changes and what you guys think about them, don't forget to drop your opinions in the comments below. Some poll changes that have come into the game are that the quantity of hop seeds gained from master farmers has been increased, but the frequency has been left the same and herb seeds can now be used to fill bird houses. Also, if you guys have been stocking up on bird's nests for the new Kebos Lowlands update, you guys cannot stock up on them because the seeds you receive from them will not be the seeds that you will get from the Kebos Lowlands. You can see all those new seeds are coming into the game. Those are not going to be received from regular bird houses and regular bird's nests because there will be a new type of nest that you can get these new seeds from. So, yep, if you guys are stockpiling them, I'm sorry, you can open them now because it won't make a difference. There are some PvP changes. So if you guys are PvPers and you've been looking for a change, congratulations, we have a couple new changes here. So first off, Anglerfish will no longer overheal if the player is in the wilderness or in a PvP or bounty hunter world and has been in combat or recently attacked a player within the last 10 seconds. Players may no longer transfer energy transfer on targets that have been recently in combat on PvP worlds. And finally, players may now no longer pre-queue a Grand Amal special attack. If you guys are PvPers and you're watching right now, please let me know in the comments what you guys think of these updates and if you think they're good or bad for the PvP community. Don't forget that this weekend is the PvP All-Stars Championship between all of your favorite content creators. So if you guys want to check out the website for this specifically, again, click the news post in the link in the description of this video and check out the website. If you guys want some stuff from the official RuneScape merch store, there is a Black Friday sale going on right now. So if you guys want to check out the deals on there, Go ahead and check it out. That is it for the regular updates of the week. Here we have the end of the news section. Again, nothing too big here. You can read it through if you want. We're going to head over to the RuneLight update and see what's new on the RuneLight client. Off to the 1.51 release of RuneLight. Thanks to the hard work of White Hooder and Deathbeam, the GPU plugin is now supported on Linux machines. So if you guys are using Linux, congratulations, you can now use 
the GPU plugin. There is also a combat level plugin which displays a tooltip for levels required to reach the next combat level in the attack styles interface. You can now also paste your username and password in the login screen with control V, but this option needs to be explicitly enabled in the login screen plugin. And finally, for a GPU fix for this week, if you guys are in stretched mode on Runelite, it now supports the GPU plugin as well. Thank you guys for watching today's update. Hope you guys enjoyed today's Thursday update video. Again, don't forget to have a happy Thanksgiving. If you guys enjoyed the video, don't forget to drop it a like and a comment. I will see you guys Sunday for the next video. Have a good one and peace. Wow.